Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Namaste experience on Wednesday. Yes, yes. Wednesday, right now, this very moment. <laughs> Who cares what day it is? It doesn't really matter, does it? Hi, Vicki. Good morning, James. It's so strange <laughs> to have you next to me. Isn't it fun? Instead of seeing your beautiful face here, I'm going to change our view here for a second. So, uh, Vicki, are you enjoying your time here at Namaste Village? Oh, I think enjoy. Whoops, here we go. Enjoying would be. It just isn't enough to say. It's enlightening. It's an ascending experience. It's a party experience. <laughs> Sometimes a little frightening experience. <laughs> don't. You, and now you have to tell them why you're saying that. I have that, to so, tell you why. So they don't think that it's really frightening. No, no, it's not really frightening. But, you know, I came because I really felt called, truly, to celebrate with Jimmy. James. Father James, here he is. So I wanted to play with him the way whatever he does. That was a big mistake. Big, no, I'm going to go play dominoes for any of you that want to play <laughs> the way we, some of us play. But um, Father James wanted me to enjoy some of the things he enjoys and some of the movies he enjoys. So you all know what some of his favorite movies are not, his, are not the kind of movies you would usually watch. No, but it was very helpful for the deeper inner workings of my mind that have been buried, apparently. So last night we watched much of, not all of, much of Fight Club. Wow. <laughs> and I'm a little bit shaky still. <laughs> I, when she told me that she wanted to watch Fight Club, I said, Vicki, you don't want to watch Fight Club. I promise you, you do not want to watch Fight No, I really do. You see, like she just said, because I, I know you love that movie and you say it's transformational. And I said, but Vicky, I mean, I'll show you a few scenes from Fight Club. And that was all it took for her to see the, the amplification of the split mind. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. You do. And it does stay with you. But if there wasn't anything in me, to stay with, it wouldn't have stayed there, and it wouldn't have sh shaken me up. But it did shake me up, and I did have a hard time sleeping, and I woke up a little bit shaken to realize right in front of you the extent of dissociation, schizophrenia, the way that we dissociate the, the rage, the blame, and the self-hatred. The self-hatred, an outpicturing of self-hatred, unlike anything I've ever... Uh, witnessed and so it was it has been a great opportunity and I'm not sorry I watched it I'm glad I did and I was really enjoying doing something that James likes and isn't that what we do with each other it's like it doesn't matter the form but that we join together and then to see the truth in it through one another's eyes and recognize how really we make up our own world we don't really see the same our picture. But then when we share, we get to benefit from each other's either spots of openness and enlightenment or spots that are covered up and need to be healed and released. So it was a great opportunity <laughs> to release Father <Holly> James. <laughs> well, I'm happy I could provide that Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to make a, a seat for you at the Domino's table after. The, the funny thing is, now, now that we've done that, now that I've shown you that movie, I, I suddenly realize I don't like it quite as much as I thought I did. Oh, he saw it through my eyes. See, yeah, something has shifted. And before we, we dive into what we're going to really focus on today, you were also yesterday speaking about uh, the second coming and the, the stations of light that are being planted during this time of the second coming. And and the role that especially Namaste Village plays into that. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, Jesus speaks about it very directly in The Course in Miracles. In the Bible, they speak about the second coming. Joel Goldsmith spoke about the second coming. And other traditions talk about the realization of our divinity in one language or another. And that's all the second coming of Christ is. The first coming was in our creation, second coming is when we accept that identity as our only reality. So what do we really do together? It's like here we are in a room, in a Zoom room, a virtual room, in a physical room, gathered with many brothers, and we certainly, and many of us have been doing this 
most of our lives. I have more than half of my life, and many of us have. So we're not here to teach each other. We don't go through concepts for, with one another, but we are here to help stabilize that Christ identity in one another so that we hold fast to that 100% and we don't waver because it's very easy to slip into the hypnotism of separation again. So that's what we do. And then to me, I feel there are centers and there are little centers of light where two or more are gathered as stabilizing centers, kind of like outposts of the second coming. And some of them are physical, like Namaste is. Some of them are virtual, like our extended Zoom family. But wherever we are, wherever two or more are gathered, we are an outpost of light. We are always that in, in our own consciousness. But when we join, because the healing is about joining, and it's going to outpicture that way, it's not about staying isolated in a cave. Although at a time that was most helpful for great numbers of people, they were isolated. But in this particular time, it's most helpful as we join together. And when we join together in joy, in happiness, and that's that playful attitude that children that are cared for and feel loved have. So I look for places of light, places that are really outposts of the second coming, and I think if you all look for them, you'll find them all in your own backyard. We were talking about the uh, Gratitude Cafe in California, that's one. Um, years ago, when um, I was called to open a restaurant, we had a bunch of them, it was open a church that looks like a restaurant, and Jesus said, now I'll do the rest. That was one of them. Um, the house with all our kids was one of them. I think that we will find wherever we have been in our lives, where we have been joined with, whether we went to a center or a teaching place or gathered with a couple of people for a meeting, those are centers of life. And that they're everything. They're where we stabilize. And now, more than ever, that's all we're really called to do, to get stable, to get secure, and recognize that I am the living Christ, that each of us is that. And that's not a statement of arrogance. That's a statement of what true humility is. It's the willingness, even though I'm still shaky from the fight club, <laughs> that, OK, I'm so glad I got that chance to see what's still left over under there and let it come to the surface, because this is what I'm 100% committed to consciously. So let my unconscious come up. But let these centers of light flourish. And I want to be aware of them and look for them wherever I can in my own backyard. So wherever they are in your backyard, enjoy them, support them, bless them, and join with them. Light finder. And this is ultimately about <clears throat> not centers as in physical, but each one of us making the choice to step into what I'm calling the first position, okay? The first original position, how we were created, the, the truth that is perceived and known and loved by God. This is being established firmly within that position, holding still within that first position, and not thinking that there is anything else but to simply know that I am one with God and I hold still within that holy presence. So we're gonna be doing something this morning, very different, that's going to give us each the chance to step into that first position. Now, I'm gonna begin by reading one paragraph. There are three paragraphs that I wrote, and I'm gonna begin by reading the first one. And I, I want you to to feel this as I read that, because you're going to be going deeper into each one. Then I'm, later I'm going to read the second paragraph and then the third. But for now, I just want you to begin to feel this first paragraph. And then we're going to do something really fun. Okay, here it is. There is no difference between me and anyone 
who lives, except that I know who I am. There's no difference between me and anyone who lives except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim it now just as it has always claimed me. Take a deep breath for a moment. Breathe in the reality of that first position. I claim it now just as it has always claimed me. Now, I read those words and I felt the impact and the truth, the reality of claiming the I am presence within me. I am that. Now, some may hear that and feel it to be a statement of arrogance. Oh, who are you to claim such a grandiose? You are that. Oh, wow. But what I say is who are you not to claim it? Who are you not to claim what is true? In fact, the arrogance is trying to assert what is not true, that I am not that, that I am not all that is, that I am not the holy, perfect child of God right now. In fact, if I were to hear anyone proclaim this wholly, completely, and have anything other than total affirmation, yes, this is true. I know that this is the reality that we share. Then it is me who is seen incorrectly. Now we're going to have a chance to do this a bit more, but first, Vicki, I'm going to bring this up on the screen. And I want you, just as I did, I want you to now to feel Vicki claim the same reality. Vicki, go ahead and say these words and feel them as deeply as you can. The first position. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives, except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim it now, just as it has always claimed me. Amen. Amen. So feel the impact of those simple words spoken by our dear sister. What do you feel when you hear her say those words, when you hear her claim this presence? Maybe because you know Vicky, you feel like, yes, of course, I know this is true of Vicky. But what do you think about yourself? Well, we're going to come to that in a moment, but I want to read the second paragraph now. In fact, I'll begin by reading that first paragraph again because we need to hear it over and over and over because I'm going to give you, some of you, the chance to say this as well. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives except that I know who I am. I know who I am. And this knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving, the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim it now, just as it has always claimed me. You speak to me. But that which I am neither hears nor answers. It simply rests within the answer. You call to me, but I neither respond nor move from where I am now. For where I am now is the only place I can be. And I see you resting 
in the same illumined reality, since the you that you seem to be is nothing. The you that you seem to be is nothing, while the you that is known, truly known, cannot exist outside of me. We are one within the heart and the mind of eternal love. And that is the only thing that there is for me to know. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives except that I know who I am. Take a deep breath and just see where that lands. I know who I am. So Vicki, I'm going to ask you now to go ahead and sit down here. And I'm just going to, we're going to begin doing this two or three times here with our Namaste Village family. Then we're going to look out to the Zoom family as well. Elaine, would you come and join me? So Elaine, take the mic. And this is the first paragraph. So I want you to not just say these words, but I want you to proclaim them and then just tune in to see what you feel as you say these words, really meaning them. The first position. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives, except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim that now, just as it has always claimed me. Okay, take a deep breath. <clears throat> Tell me how that lands within you. Very powerful. Is there anything holding back? No. I feel the I am presence right here, right now. No resistance? Nothing. Perfect. Take one more deep breath. Thank you, dear one. Amen. <laughs> Gary, why don't you come up? Okay, so once again, say the, these words, but don't just say them. Drink them. Take them inside. The first position. There is no difference between me and anyone else who lives, except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim that now, just as it always, as it has always claimed me. All right, take a deep breath. Tell me how that lands within you just overwhelming, um, absolute, simple truth. Is there anything resisting or holding back? No. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you come up? Isn't this fun? <laughs> yeah. 
So, same thing. Drink in these words as if they are the finest wine. The first position. You take the mic. Thank you. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives, except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim that now, just as it has always claimed me. All right, take a deep breath. Do you feel any resistance or any hold back from those words that you just spoke? A little. Tell me about it. Um, I think the ego is still clinging to part of it. And that's a, that's an important part of the spiritual journey for me is letting go of ego. And I wish I could say I'm there, but I'm not, you know, I've got a ways to go. So there's still a part of you that says, I am not that. Yes. Okay. I mean, well, not in so many words, but I can feel a little tug of resistance. And what is the resistance saying to you? Take some due diligence time to work with this idea. Why is that? Mm -hmm. I, I think truth takes some time of discernment for me. So you can't, you can't receive it right now? Why not? Tell me, tell me why. Most of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why do you need time to accept uh, that which is timeless? I get most of it. <laughs> I'll take 95%, 98%. <laughs> okay, what's, what's it going to take to get that last 2%? Two, two, two uh, an hour or two of meditation probably would <laughs> loosen it right up. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Sorry. I claim that now, which has always claimed me. I'm going to read the final part of this lesson. And then we're going to turn to the Zoom room. So get ready, y'all. Let me put this up on the screen. I'll do the second part as well. You speak to me, but that which I am neither hears nor answers. It simply rests within the answer. You call to me, but I neither respond nor move from where I am now. For where I am now is the only place I can truly be. And I see you resting in the same illumined reality, since the you you seem to be is nothing, while the you that is known cannot exist outside of me. We are one within the heart and the mind of eternal love, and that is the only thing that there is for me to learn. In the world of events, questions rise and answers seem to follow but where i am there are no questions only perfect certainty of self there are no questions only perfect certainty of self this certainty is not something that can be earned through effort or will it is a gift that is offered this and every moment all I need is the willingness to empty my arms of the heavy load that I've been carrying since. Hold on. All I need is the willingness to empty my arms of the heavy load I've been carrying and accept what I am is offering. Accept what I am offering. Every concept must be challenged and released before I can perceive this gift, every concept rather, must be challenged and released before I can perceive this gift. Every attachment 
must dissolve before I can receive, re receive what has always been mine. So now I'm going to call on Daphne. Daphne, if you would unmute yourself, I would love it if you would read this first paragraph just as the others did and drink it in and just see if there is anything in you that is holding back from a complete and total yes of this reality, whenever you want. So do you have that up on the screen? Yeah, can okay, you see? Okay, there. The first position. Now I can, thank you. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through the time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and will forever be. I claim it now just as it has always claimed me. All right, take a deep breath. And tell us where that lands. What do you feel when you say those words? What I see is that sometimes I really know that. And there are plenty of times when I don't really know it. And the times I don't know it are when I'm feeling judgmental about other people, when I get annoyed about things, then I feel that I don't know who I am. And, and the line, this knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. Sometimes I'm really there and sometimes I'm just not. So um, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that, James. Mm. Yeah, I think that's true for all of us. That's true. But perfect, <laughs> perfect consistency brings about perfect experience. We just are choosing to be more and more consistent to notice when we're not feeling this and to turn it around and remind ourselves, I am that, I am that holy presence. I am the light of God. I am the holy perfect child of God, complete and healed and whole. To claim that once again, whenever you feel yourself wavering or judging or pointing the finger, come back. See, it, this doesn't have to be long years of therapy anymore. It, it's a simple shift back to that I am presence. You know what it feels like now. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. It's a simple shift back to that home where you know yourself to be. Thank you, Daphne. Thank you, James. And I want to say thanks to Namaste and this wonderful community. I'm there so many more times than I ever was. So <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call one more. Bob Davis, you, you are shining bright this morning. <laughs> if you would, I would ask you now to unmute yourself and proclaim this first paragraph. Indeed, the first position. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives, except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is changeless and it moves without moving. It is unborn, giving birth to itself. This is who I am and forever and will forever be. I claim it now just as it always claimed me. Okay, take a deep breath, Bob. Where does that land within you? What do you feel? I just feel my heart open and I feel very present with it. Mm. Anything holding back or resisting? No, not really. Okay, good. Not really, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Here's what we're going to do to, to, to close this part. I want everyone, 
Everyone in the Zoom room is muted, but I still want you to speak this out loud. And everyone here at Namaste, I, I hope you can see the screen. If not, come a little bit closer so you can see the screen and read the words. And we're going to read these words together and we're going to really feel the impact of the truth of your reality. Okay, and notice if there's anything that's holding back, anything that's saying, no, I'm not ready. Just wrap your arms around that part and give it all your love. Here we go. There is no difference between me and anyone who lives except that I know who I am. This knowledge allows me to move through time and space without changing. It is the changeless that moves without moving. It is the unborn giving birth to itself. This is who I am and forever will be. I claim it now, just as it has always claimed me. Take a deep breath, everyone, and just feel the impact of the truth of your being, the reality that is real, the wholeness that is forever whole. And if there's anything that still holds back and says, I'm not ready. Trust me, you are. You're so ready for this. You're so needed for this. That's what Vicky was sharing before. The second coming is now, and each one of us is so needed to step into the light and to proclaim what is real. We look around us today, we see only shadows and dissension and polarization and war and disease, sickness, pain and death. And that's the reason why you're here. All of those are signs that the second coming or the first position is now. And it cannot happen without you. So when we say these words, we are accepting our role in salvation itself. That's all it takes is to accept that this is true now, this very moment, not one day, not after you've read more books or gone to the morning session in Namaste Village another 150 times. Right now, feel that. Vicki, would you come back up? I would love for you to close us out and just guide us deeper into that experience. Let's take a deep breath together. And we join, we join our breath, we join our awareness of this present moment. Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us to this present moment of acceptance. Acceptance of what is, is the fulfillment of our function here in time. With our breath right now together, this is the breath of saying, yes, thank you. This is what I am. This is who I am. This is what I recognize in myself and in every brother. This is my natural environment. This is my breath. This is the birth of a world based on holiness, on oneness, and on love. This is the release of everything that isn't that in my breath right now. Here I am right now claiming and accepting, welcoming the light of my own soul into my awareness. I welcome it, I receive it, I offer it 
in everything I say and do and think as what I am. That changeless state is our reality through all the forms that you lead us through. We today accept this reality and let it shine, let it sparkle, let it bless all of our brothers in time so that they come to this remembrance and join us here in this state of acceptance and realization. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you that I am as you created me. Amen. 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 Thank you. What an opportunity. What a moment. This is a holy baptism. Hmm. I've been to the Jordan River many times and have baptized many, many people in the Jordan River. One of the things about baptizing people in the Jordan River is that when you're standing there, there will be, at that moment, dozens of little fish sucking at your feet. It's the strangest and most wonderful feeling to have you have to keep moving because it's so weird to feel all of these fish just sucking at your feet as you're being baptized. And you may feel something similar to that right now. <laughs> there are little thoughts and ideas and concepts that are sucking at you right now. That's okay. That's all right. Just let them do their thing. You just stay focused on this holy baptism and know that this is true you are wholly accepted by wholeness itself that's all you need to know the rest happens on its own so thank you vicky thanks to every one of you now if you want maybe you can go back to youtube and you can even watch this again so that this can he go even deeper within you or maybe go back and write down those words and put them up somewhere so that you can read them whenever you begin to feel yourself slipping but we're going to close now not with our normal prayer but we're going to close with the prayer that we had been starting with we're going to now end with our morning affirmation because this is much more appropriate to what we just experienced the truth is that I am as God created me right now, forever, amen. So let's share these words and really drink them in as we did before. I am as God created me. If I remain as God created me, fear has no meaning. Evil is not real and misery and death do not exist. I am as God created me. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so get ready. Here you go. The old mic drop. Mi punto. Mi punto. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.